Hey, Paul here from the Hell Team Trials Workshop. Just here today to talk about part two of our little video about the Mazzocchi 40 mil aluminium forks, specifically this right hand rebound side, which is a closed cartridge type fork and gives people a little bit more grief than the left hand side. Anyway, we'll dig deeper into it and have a chat about the way this works and the way to fix it. Okay, we're gonna push through some of this early stuff a bit quickly because it was covered in part one. So using either a special tool, a pin spanner, circuit, pliers, whatever you like to get that cap off, slide the top down, slide this preload spacer down to give you access to underneath. It'll clip underneath that piece there. Yeah, spanner in. Um, it'll be held in place. 22 mil ring at the top. Just break that um, and wind that cap off. Um, be careful because you've got the brass rebound rod underneath, which is a little bit fragile. So just be careful as you pull it off nice and straight. Um, you can see that rebound rod has wound itself out a little bit now. Um, but yes, if you can just wind that in just to keep it nice and safe there. And then we're going to move on. Just remove your open end wrench there and slide the preload spacer off. Um, and then we're going to take the spring out. I've got a rag there because you always end up with oil on it if the oil level's in there. This one is a bit rough, so the oil level's pretty low. Um, remove that uh, dust seal down the bottom. I'm doing that with my tool from Mott's. Um, then after we've done that, we want to get rid of that little clip to access uh, the fork seal. Get rid of that. And then we're going to remove the fork leg. Um, all shown previously. Uh, just one thing I didn't cover last time was if you want to hold that leg tight, stick your front axle in there and that just gives you a bit of a way to lock that from rotating while you're undoing that bottom screw. Once you've got everything apart, get it in a bin, get it nice and clean. You can see this one is horrendous. Uh, lots of scratches, lots of dirty, stinking old oil. Um, and pretty wrecked parts, but we'll get in there and we'll fix it. Um, so most of this is covered in part one. Um, you know, doing seals, doing the bushes. I don't need to revisit that. Um, get all these parts out, get them nice and clean. You want everything spotless. Now this is what we're looking at. This is the closed cartridge in this rebound side. Um, it has oil inside and oil outside of the cartridge, but there's no real transfer of oil between the two areas. That's why it's called a closed cartridge. When you end up with no oil on the outside because your fork seals have blown, that oil on the inside can slowly make its way out and you end up just pushing the piston damper through air and you'll lose all your rebound characteristics and you end up with a whole bunch of problems. This is pretty common with these old Mizoki 40 mil forks. So we need to pull this apart to reprime it. We need to clean it and reprime it, but there's also one thing in there that's a problem. Push that cap down. Um, it shows you there's a little circlip in there. We want to get that circlip out with a little pick. Uh, take that out and that allows us to get that bush out. Just use that bottom screw that was holding it in to help you get that bush out. Um, it's got an O-ring on it, so it's a bit tight, uh, especially in a crappy old set of forks like this that's really dirty it's a bit hard to get out but just a gentle wiggle it'll come out there you can see it and that retains everything stops everything coming out the bottom uh, underneath that uh, there's a bottom out spring you can see it there we'll pull that out that's really dirty uh, so clean everything up um, we want to do this as we go I'm not showing you all that because it's boring then we push the rod up that pushes out another bush, see with the Teflon band on it, and the piston underneath, which is the bit that does the work. Um, there's the bush, you can see the band, you can see the little bleed screw that we'll talk about later. Um, this is the piston, uh, this is where a lot of the problem is caused, through lack of oil, and what we're going to look at is a broken bent shim. Um, so we want to get the, our spanners on there, unlock the locking ring, just wind this off, and then just be careful when you lay everything out, when you've taken it apart, that it all goes back in exactly the same order. So lay it on your bench as it comes off with the top parts facing up. You'll have a nut like that, put it on your bench the way it came off. Then there's a little step bush. The widest part is to the top there or to the bottom when it's in the forks. Um, and then there's two shim washers that control the oil flow to the piston. So there's a small shim washer and a thicker shim washer. Then we've got the piston, and then on the other side of this piston, once we pull this off, we're gonna clean all this stuff as we go. Uh, on the other side, you should have a flat shim washer, which is there, you can see that, but underneath that should be a, a, a very similar washer, but bent. 
it's missing. Now these break often because they, they're always bending. That shim washer's there to put pressure onto the flat washer underneath it and hold it against the piston so it's always moving. So I've rebuilt this and I've put a bent shim washer back in there. I'll just rotate it so you can see, but that shim washer there that's bent holds the one underneath it flat against the piston. So that controls, as there's more oil flow, the, the washer is bent and allows oil to go through. These Teflon bands now too are impossible to get, so we cut our own. Um, if you get yourself a piece of one mil Teflon sheet like this, you can purchase this in lots of places. You can cut it up. Um, the dimensions are 83 mils long, four mils wide, and that's a perfect little replacement band there. So once you've got that back together, um, fill the oil up all the way. This is critical. We wanna get this whole system in a bath of oil, not in air. So pour oil in here until it just starts to come out those bleed holes there at the top. Um, put your Teflon band back on um, and gently bring this down into the cartridge. Um, you just be really careful as you're putting that band in that it goes in nicely, doesn't get hooked up. And then you want to ease this down. We want to get this down into the oil, squeezing out any little tiny bit of air there through those side holes. And we want to get this piston under the oil. So I'm just pushing this down really gently with my thumb, allowing any air to escape, and there wasn't much. But we're just getting that in a bath of oil. Um, so once we get that down underneath the oil, we want to put that bung back in that had the little screw in it on top of this. We're going to remove that screw to allow a bit of air out again and get everything in, in, in a bath of oil with no air bubbles at all. So we've done that, we put the a little bit more oil back in. Sorry, just uh, spilling a little bit there. Um, and then we get this cap in and I'll show you how it sits. So remove that little screw and then slide that in nicely. See that's deep in the oil. Put the screw back in and then once the screw's back in, put the spring back in, put your circlet back on the bush, that end cap and then back into the leg. Now while it's like this, don't push the rod down. We want it at full extension. So get that all nice and nipped up into your lower fork leg. Um, and then once that's done, pour some oil into this leg. The object of this is to try and get um, oil in there so we can stroke the upper rod and just make sure there's no air bubbles. So you can feel it. If there's air there, you can really feel it. Just push through really quickly. You want resistance in both directions. So give it a bit of a stroke, make sure it feels good, um, and then we're gonna reassemble. Um, I've already changed the bushes and changed the um, lower oil seal in this, so it's all ready to go. Um, so I'm happy that now that that has um, gone in well, I've put the fork leg, upper fork leg back in. I'm gonna top that up to the um, 160 mil air gap um, and then slide it all back together again. That's got it covered. If you'd like any of the parts manuals, they're available on the Hell Team website. And please like and subscribe down below, and we'll come back to you with more bike tech reviews and more workshop tips and tricks from the Hell Team Trials Workshop. Now, where's that damn 10mm socket?